Hi, and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted to have Peter Armstrong with us today. Peter is uh, joining us from Accessible Media and is going to be talking about two of our favorite topics today. That is accessibility and social media. So welcome, Peter. Can you tell us a little bit about how you came to be working in the field? Sure. Thank you so much, Neil. And I just want to say thank you to, uh, to you and Deborah and Antonio as well for, uh, for having me. It's a huge honor as a longtime participant in the chat from wherever I am in the world, most often in Toronto, um, to, to be a part of things. So my career started in accessibility um, about three years ago when I was working with the Para Pan Am Games in Toronto, which was during the, the summer of 2015. And we worked with a lot of athletes with disabilities from a variety of para sports. And I quickly learned a lot about a lot of different sports that I wasn't familiar with and fell in love with them. And uh, most importantly, uh, learned a lot from and about the athletes that I was working with and a number of my colleagues um, had worked in accessibility before in other multi-sport games. So you know a number of people from our IT team worked with um, our partners at, at Atos and different Olympics before the Para Pan Am Games that I was lucky enough to be a part of. So I think from two different perspectives where um, I was responsible for the public facing content on our website, which all has to be accessible and working with partners to improve the accessibility of sites that we were linking to. And then there was the, the larger accessibility aspect of actually on the ground, in venue, um, in inclusive design, those types of things. So. We had a volunteer program of over 23,000 participants, and all of them went through um, thorough accessibility training through an accessible web portal. So to be a part of all that was incredible, and uh, right place, right time afterwards. And it just worked out that Accessible Media Inc., or AMI, in, also based in Toronto, Canada, was recruiting for a very similar position. So I was lucky enough to get the manager of digital content position with Accessible Media at a really exciting time there where they were redesigning their website to be both accessible and um, joyful. And at the same time, there is an opportunity to redesign the social media strategy to align with that. And it just lined up that as we were going through our agile web project, the same time social media organizations were releasing some new accessibility tools. So we were able to implement them together. Uh, recently, I've been lucky enough to speak at Social Media Week Toronto, and I was shocked and very pleased that they accepted my pitch to speak about accessibility, because I promise I was the only one there speaking about it. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's getting more and more mainstream. We went to an accessibility hub sponsored by the UN at South by Southwest in Austin this year. And most recently, uh, we were invited down and I had an opportunity to speak with a colleague from Accessible Media about audio description or described video in media. And that was hosted by YouTube. So YouTube hosted its inaugural accessibility summit earlier this month in November 2016. So. I got to uh, speak with and, and about a number of YouTube rock stars with disabilities, most notably my colleague Molly Burke, who's a host of one of our shows. And um, around the same time within the last month, I've also accepted a volunteer position with the Invictus Games, which um, is Prince Harry's brainchild where sport therapy is used to help people with mental and physical disabilities um, recover from, from service at war. Wow, that's wow, pretty that's impressive, impressive Peter. Peter. I'm enjoying it, thank you. <laughs> I know that I know Richard Streitz, my business partner, also attended the event, the YouTube event in LA, and he was very impressed with everybody there. That's great. We had a good chat as well when, when he wasn't speaking to, uh, to Tommy Edison, the blind film yeah. critic. <laughs> yeah. I got to yeah, chat. He was fascinated with him. So I know that y'all put out a lot of really, really good content and you 
you blog and you're you're very active on the internet and on all the different mediums of social media that's and we were thrilled at access chat when y'all joined us you joined us early on and we actually are celebrating a birthday with access chat we are three years old this um we started this neil you contacted me three years ago and said hey we should do this so i know we just passed our 100th episode and so this you will be our 101 episode but we also are celebrating a birthday at access chat but why is it important to you and to your company that you um because you're not only um participating and and marketing yourselves but you do more of providing really good content for everybody i know i use your content with clients all the time why is providing accessible content so important to aim to uh you know your company well, I, I appreciate it. I'll start by wishing you guys a happy birthday. And um, I get the feeling there's going to be a lot of uh, birthday cake emojis in our near future in the next couple of days. So uh, what, what's attracted myself and, and speaking on behalf of uh, accessible media um, to the, it comes back to the service part of what we do. So um, our, our role as a nonprofit uh, multi-platform broadcast channel in um, Canada from coast to coast is to serve the, uh, the over 5 million Canadians with disabilities with a primary focus on the blind and low vision community. So we think, um, we think that there's a real opportunity not only to, to entertain through content and, and video media that's completely accessible, and by that I mean described with captions, with a transcript, those sorts of things but also to provide a service. So um, you'll be seeing and, and hopefully already are uh, noticing a, a slight shift in content where we're trying to include more how-to videos. Right. And we have uh, a lot of our presenters, on-air personalities, celebrities and rock stars, as I call them, um, have disabilities and are from the, the blind and low vision community. So what I'm trying to do is, is take some of that established um, television and audio content and then integrate that on multi-channels. So we have, um, we have presenters that are comfortable in front of the camera and get a couple minutes to review a new app. Why not take that idea to the website like we've done recently with Grant Hardy. He's uh, on our Vancouver bureau and he, uh, he kind of reviewed the Move It app for transportation within cities. And I said, Grant, what I'd love to hear is how do you use it? And fortunately for me, Grant's an incredible writer, so he made my job easy. And I didn't have to do any editing. I just got to grab a photo and put it up on the website with some alt text. So um, we are, once again, we're a nonprofit, so it's, it's a luxury for us to be able to participate in these types of programs. Um, a number of other accessibility advocacy initiatives that I know you're very familiar with. And then also get out to the general public, partner with the, the Twitters, the Facebooks, the YouTubes of the world, and say we're not competing with anyone. We're fortunate enough to work with blind and low vision Canadians. And we actually have a research panel that has over 1,100 participants from coast to coast. So we can also say not only will we share our data, but we can connect you with real users who can give you direct feedback and improve your your user testing, um, get some ideas for speaking about accessibility before you release new social media tools or web tools. Uh, I know that, um, the, the, and you, you mentioned the surveys and stuff and the research that you are doing and some of the best content out there, because I will have corporations, I do a lot of work with corporations, and they'll say, you know, what are the stats, you know, prove it to us. And I've actually, um, I go out to AMI all the time, and y'all have got some really good information out there about how often a video is watched when it's captioned, and I go there all the time, and I'll tell you what I do. What I started doing is I would put it in Google or Bing, and I would just ask the question, and it always went to your site. So now, instead of doing that, I just go to your site first. Um, but that's something I think that we really need. We need to continue to get this content 
and prove that the good news is, we all know this, that when we make things accessible, it improves the experience for everyone. I, I know that Antonio had shared with us that um, I believe 80% of Facebook videos are watched with the sound off. So how much more valuable can it, will that video be if you can add captioning? So um, I know that I, in the United States, really, really appreciate the content that you are putting out there. Do y'all do business in, outside the, of Canada? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, well, first of all, thank you, and I appreciate that, that you use us as such a resource, and we are just going to continue building out that type of hub mentality. So... Um, we will be more and more of a, a national, if not global, accessibility hub in terms of content that we produce, but also connecting people with content from the greater accessibility world. So really that how-to service mentality. Um, fortunately, a lot of, um, as a nonprofit, uh, we're not competing with other national broadcasters for advertising dollars. So a lot of our content on AMI.ca is available worldwide, so it's not geo-blocked. So you're able to, to enjoy a lot of the content we produce in Canada. And yes, we're funded to produce that for Canadians, but um, we're elated if people are around the world are, are talking about it and sharing those details. And then to, to We recently that. crashed your immigration site, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I heard about that. there was uh, much talk about that potential uh, <laughs> a week ago when I was in uh, Los Angeles at the YouTube Accessibility Summit. So it's uh, it's great for us to be able to get out and, and connect with leaders like globally, like yourselves, and you know not only share ideas but share content. We're we're in the information sharing business as well. So I think a great a great starting place for anyone who's interested in learning more about accessibility from a media perspective um, is we, we simply uh, created uh, ami.ca slash media dash accessibility. So, you know, we're, we're happy to hear that those um, SEO tricks are paying off and Google likes us. But uh, we're just going to build that out and working with partners like yourselves, um, building relationships with Google and YouTube to find out, to really zero in on that data. And you mentioned Antonio's statistic about captions. And what we like to do is bring accessibility into a video production conversation at the brainstorming period. So I think that's, captions are great. Captions are a must. Um, you don't want to be stuck with craptions, as uh, Ricky Pointer, who was at the, the summit, was speaking about. But why not just like on a web project where we talk about building accessibility in from day one, or else you're going to end up spending way too much time and way too much money fixing it. Let's do the same with video content. So you can actually integrate described elements naturally when you're producing the content and build it into that timeline so you're not catching up at the end. So those are the, the types of tricks that we're working on. Um, we're in partnership with other organizations. We've actually written the best practices for audio description or video description. So you can do that for live events. You can do that for uh, pre-produced script written uh, for broadcast channels. And, and best of all, now we're getting a ton of interest from um, you know, younger DIY, do-it-yourself YouTubers that are just starting to scratch the surface and realizing that they're not being inclusive because they didn't know about this. And then let's be honest, it's a growing demographic. There's the, the business reasons as well, that there's a, a huge growth potential in this market. And why not make your content accessible from the beginning, put captions in from the beginning. And I know captions, I'm cited. And captions get me because I'm always scrolling through a mobile device. And when right. captions play at the beginning, you're interested. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of captions. Um, firstly, I just need to correct Deborah. I know that we've been working together what seems like an eternity, but it's actually only been two years. So two, two, years. two, two years of access chat going going and it's grown so fast it feels like longer. Um, but it's it's been a it's been one heck of a ride. Um, but I, I'm you know, a big fan of captions. I uh, tend to sit and watch video and, uh, in a room where my wife's playing piano 
you know, imagine just the, the video blaring out. I'd be killed if she's in the middle of a piece. So it's really important to, to have captions so I can enjoy video. And, and the Facebook stats show that people are watching captioned videos for longer than uncaptioned ones as well. So not only are people watching videos with the sound off, but the engagement is higher. So that's really important. And they see that particularly important for driving their ad revenue. So um, aside from the accessibility angle, it's got a real impact on people's bottom line. Right. So you, you've, you've talked about the, the work that you're doing with captions. I actually think that captions will become less crap over time. Uh, and I think that they're still really important and we ought not to denigrate the efforts of organizations like uh, Google that they're making to automate captions because I believe that they really are part of a solution because if you look at the amount of content that we're generating, the, the effort that goes into captioning a half hour video of access chat is quite significant. So, um, and people are doing it all the time. The, the effort in fact outweighs the length of the time of the video. So therefore we have to find a solution. So um, using artificial intelligence, deep learning is really important for the future of accessibility of, of uh, user generated content. That said, right now that we still need to improve the quality. So uh, what are the other things that you're using? You, you use social media a lot. What are the tools that you're using? Um, and do you find that despite platforms like Twitter having the availability to use alt text, that certain tools that use those platforms are more accessible, some tools are more accessible than others? And do you have recommendations? Sure. Thanks for setting me up so well for that. So I think um, to go through my own user journey, user experience as a, as a content creator um, and curator, I think, and, and this is exactly what I said to YouTube directly, is I do think that we, we need to give YouTube and Google credit for creating that technology where there are auto captions generated for every video because it's a huge time saver. There's no reason not to start with those unless, um, unless you have a robust captioning budget. So for us, we we work with partners, we outsource a lot of our captioning. That's not possible for every organization and especially every independent YouTuber. So what I would like to, um, what I would like to hope users uh, start to see YouTube as from an accessibility standpoint is they're actually the hub of um, kind of open source user generated video content from an accessibility standpoint. So you upload your video, to YouTube, you let it auto-populate those captions, and then you spend some time correcting the captions yourself. But you're not having to line up time codes. They've done the hard work for you. You just need to go through and, and basically do a copy edit. Make sure there's no inappropriate language or language out sure. of context that's snuck in. And then um, what you can do from there is sign off on that caption file, publish it, and then save that same caption file so it's an SRT file. And then you can repurpose that and upload that to Facebook. So if you're using the native uh, Facebook video player, which they want you to do, so they'll show your video to more people if you do it that way. And then you're not doing any extra work. You're renaming three or four uh, characters in the caption title. So it's the same SRT file. You can repurpose it across platforms. So I think that's that's a huge win, but once again, you need to be knee deep in it and doing it every day, I would say, to really connect those dots and put them all together. So, you know, I was elated when Twitter released the um, alt text tool back in the spring of 2016, but why they buried the accessibility setting as the, the last in a long list that you have to find through your settings tab I'm not sure because accessibility starts with the letter A and the rest seems to be alphabetical. Um, and then, you know, what, what people are talking about in our community is, that's great, why not make it a mandatory field? Because every sighted person that I show the tool to thinks it's amazing. And, you know, they give you 400 characters per picture. Um, another disappointment with that launch, though, is that to me, it was clear that their hearts at Twitter were in the right place, but they probably didn't do um, user testing with the community that they were targeting, which Definitely is where, not. 
AMI could have come in to help because I ran over to my colleague who was made for Twitter because he's hilarious. His name is uh, Kelly McDonald and he hosts a couple of our shows on AMI. And what we learned is that Kelly couldn't add alt text using voiceover to a photo that he wanted to share. So Kelly couldn't make a photo accessible to another Twitter user like Kelly. So all that to say that they did get it right in a future release, but these types of things, um, talking about accessibility from the very beginning, whether you're working on a, a website redesign or a website launch or social media strategy or producing a video for traditional broadcast channels. I think that if, you, you know, if you're humble enough to admit what you know and speak to experts and, and seek the information for what you don't know, you can save yourself a ton of time, and at the end of the day, there's a huge return on investment there. And, and I think the thing is that the real experts are the users. What really got, what really got me about the, the hiding of the alt text in, in Twitter is that you've already got things for editing pictures on, on, in the picture. Uh, there is no reason why that couldn't have been put there by default, and then you can you can uh, make sure that most people get it viewable. Even if you're not going to force users to to create alt text, at least put it up front and and, and center, because it's not an it's not obtrusive. It's not going to get in in the way of the user experience at all. One hundred. And actually, and actually finding it in the settings, as you say, is really <laughs> difficult. They don't even put it in a place that that is obvious within no, accessibility. Settings and then display and sound, if I remember correctly. Yeah, just kind of... yeah it was just random. Deborah? Well, it, I, I guess A for afterthought. Um, yeah. Maybe what we can do, since we are all very big fans of Twitter, is on this uh, Twitter chat that we're going to have tomorrow featuring you, Peter, um, maybe what we can all do is we can add an at Twitter and make sure that um, and, and you know just so that they know that we would really appreciate if they would you know make it mandatory move it up to the top and and just let them get you know give them some positive feedback on what needs to be done because I know that Twitter is committed it's committed they're committed to us we love Twitter I mean that's why we have this tweet chat and we didn't know you Peter before you know we started doing this I had I had often tripped across to AMI. Um, another thing that y'all do that I just think is impressive is that you put out a lot of your presentations on SlideShare. So there have been times when I'm going to, you know, do a presentation and I want to include something and I do a search on SlideShare and there are amazing SlideShare contents out there by AMI. And so I put them in my deck. I give full credit from where they come from because I really appreciate it. But that's very unusual, Peter. I don't see a lot of the – well, I don't, I don't think there's anyone out there like AMI, which is why we wanted you all on the program. Not only are you part of our community – but I love this sharing and really engaging and advocating and actually employing talented individuals with disabilities. So I really like who y'all are. So applause for, um, for one of your users. Applause for one of your users. And no, I can't count. So happy second birthday, not third yeah. birthday. But um, we, we appreciate it. Yeah, and also another thing, Peter, you know, often we, um, we've had some amazing people on Access Chat, but a lot of them don't come back and um, continue to be part of our community. Well, that's something y'all have done. Y'all have been part of the community from the beginning. You're very active. And I know that Neil, Antonio, and I and the rest of the community, we really appreciate the dedication that you have to accessibility and social media. We appreciate it. So um, kudos from us to you. We're in a unique position as well. So it's, it's one thing that, um, you know, we, we are in the information sharing business too. We're in a unique position as a non nonprofit broadcaster. And we, we want to be at the front of, um, of innovation in terms of uh, traditional broadcast media becoming more and more accessible and, and also through our digital channels. So, it's, it's all about building, you know, there's power in numbers and building through these partnerships. And it was, uh, we were all honored to be invited by YouTube to participate mm -hmm. and hopefully be involved in, in future um, opportunities for content creators and 
data sharing with our research panel, those types of things. And, and also, we, we do work with the media partnerships team at Twitter Canada, at Facebook Canada. So I, I love that you stress that we, we do think their heart's in the right place when they're launching these new tools. It's just, once again, we, we learn together, and if we can get the right people involved early, uh, we're, we're more than happy to be there because it, it benefits all of us. And I love Right. And we'll help them turn up their volume. We'll help them really turn up the volume. And the brands need to be socially conscious and concerned about social impact. So we will help them. Exactly. And I, I'll be at mentioning um, at video as well, which is Twitter's video handle specifically okay. for their team. So all right, Twitter cool. and Facebook have uh, accessibility teams that we can mention online tomorrow. So we'll put that in, uh, we'll put that in, in some of the messaging, which I believe is um, at A11Y team. Yeah, you got, yes, you got at A11Y team and at video, haven't you? So. So who, who does that belong to that belongs to Twitter or AMI? I, I missed, I Twitter. misunderstood. No, no problem, that's Twitter. Excellent. Excellent. I did not realize that thing. I know those two tags, but I didn't know they were Twitter. So excellent news. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I know that um, the one thing that I would say is that it's Twitter. Twitter seems to need uh, to use Twitter more, mm -hmm. actually. I and think maybe they use it for, dis nice uh, for listening. Yeah, maybe they can um, engage with this on Twitter. <laughs> you know, I, I know they listen, but uh, you know, it's a two-way. It's a social medium, and, and and one of my and I, and I love Twitter, but it's one of my 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 big uh, things is that actually a lot of the people at Twitter don't use Twitter enough, um, and, and if they did, just imagine how awesome it would be. It's already pretty awesome. I, it's you yeah. know I love I love Twitter. It, it's fantastic, and yes, the people have their heart in the right place. But you know what? Um, we were talking with Jenny Lace Flurry the other week about dog fooding, and, and, and really, you know, Microsoft are, are eating their own dog food now, and and, and things have changed significantly. The, the, you know, the, the company has really ha made significant strides to be a different entity in the last few years. I think that that maybe that's one of the things that that some of the some of the social media companies need to do a bit more of is actually really immersing themselves in the worlds of the products that they create because then they're really going to understand the implications of some of the accessibility issues of, of their products and also really understand the power of their communities because right. access chat is a powerful community. Other There are other communities out there as well uh, and, and it's a really incredibly engaged audience as you know Peter you've been here you've been with us for, for a long time now uh, engaging in the chats and people keep coming back week after week so maybe not all of the guests but we've got a significant number that do come back yes yes uh, uh, you know uh, and and that's grown our audience and, and grown the reach and and it's it's quite a powerful thing i've been amazed at actually how many people do stick around so uh, I just guess we're coming towards the end of our half hour, and I, I know Deborah's in the, you know sneaked out of a conference, so has to go back. So, uh, do you have any closing thoughts before we before we finish for recording? Any yeah, tips for for users? To finish your sentiment, Neil, I really do think um, kudos to you guys, kudos to Access Chat, because at the end of the day, what attracts me to social media is the community building aspect. So. I started out many, many moons ago as a cub reporter. Um, I have a journalism background working in community news. So to me, this is a natural extension. When I found out what you guys were doing, I wanted to, uh, to jump in as quickly as possible and be a part of it. And to your point that users keep coming back to the weekly chat is great. And that's one thing that I've made connections through Access Chat that I meet up with at other accessibility conferences. Um, some of your super fans have become accessible media super fans, and we're trying to do the same in reverse. Um, during my presentation at, uh, at YouTube's Accessibility Summit, I talked about what we're doing right now. I, I talked about Access Chat and, and threw the hashtag out, and Richard was in the audience. Thank you. So, I mean, we're you know we're in it together, and at the yes. end of the day, I just want to say we're we're 
in the accessibility game, and we're lucky to be in the information sharing game. So um, ami.ca slash media dash uh, media dash accessibility is a good place to start. But um, also we we have an opportunity to discuss all of that every week, thanks to you folks. So just wanted to close with a happy birthday and a thank you for allowing me to be a part of the celebration. Thank you. Yes, and we, tell us tell us um, AMI's Twitter handle before we uh, close. Absolutely. So please follow AMI at Accessible Media. And myself, I am at Peter B. Armstrong, written in camel case, which each of the <laughs> first words in my name and my middle initial are capitalized to help me read it, but also to help um, users with low vision understand that handle better. Thank Fantastic. you, Peter. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, bye-bye. Take care.